Are you struggling with losing spots to other riders before a race ends or struggling to keep up with other cyclists during group rides? In this video, I have four of the most underrated skills to help you save energy and move around the bunch with more confidence. Fortunately, this isn't about fitness. So just picture yourself, the satisfaction of being able to move yourself, put yourself wherever you want around a bunch. And this might be the key to really achieving new levels of results that you're looking for. And the good news is that they're super easy so anyone can do them. To understand how these techniques work, let's first explore the concept of momentum in cycling. So to describe momentum, it's the product of an object's mass and velocity, and it can be a bit abstract for many people, but most cyclists understand momentum in our legs. And understanding momentum is all about learning the power of momentum. And it changed my cycling forever as a wee 13 year old. In fact, the day after I learned this, I went from being dropped on the first climb to finishing the race with the lead group with no extra fitness needed. In fact, this was so, I was so new at being up the front, I got pulled up by the commissaire for taking my hands off the bars and the other riders took notice of my black socks and had a go at me. And I've carried these lessons with me on every ride since. Momentum is a fundamental element of riding a bike on two wheels. There's nothing new here, but it also pays a great part in the subtle art of cycling. Conserving energy, easy place gains, and closing gaps with ease. All of this falls under an idea that I'm calling cheap momentum. Momentum that comes at none or very little extra effort to go further and faster than you otherwise would. And it's more than just riding smoothly, as riding smoothly is something that's done when all other things remain constant. But the bulk of bike racing and group riding is done with nerves, mishaps, and attacks. And this is where having strategies to get some cheap gains comes in. It will save your power when it counts, and it can be the difference between staying with the group or not. So, a few quick examples of riding are riding over the top of a hill instead of just to the top, and the classic Madison swing, the hand sling, done in places other than the track, a bit sneaky there. And then there's the other type of slingshot effect, or dropping the wheel, where you accelerate into the person, dropping the wheel, and then accelerating out of them, out of their slipstream, which gives you a higher speed than the person in front, allowing you to ride straight past them with less power. Or how about when you take food or drink? The worst time to come out of an aero position is when you're going the fastest, and that's nearly always downhill. So the best time is when you're going the slowest, but that's always on an uphill. So that leaves flat terrain. And so if you think about this before you break your aero position for a drink. And this leads us to the first technique, riding smoothly, changing pedaling speed or pedaling with an inconsistent method uses more energy. So shifting gears before you need to is a way to avoid breaking the continuous power that you need to keep going. Okay, so don't bite my head off with this. I know that my two examples are pretty common and you might already be, be doing them, but there's a specific way to do this technique which is underrated and doing it in this way will change the game for your energy savings. When we change position or terrain, often we need to change gears quickly. And we're often told to shift down and the rule is always before you need to. Now, again, let me get clear about this. This is a great rule and I'm not bashing it. The purpose of this rule is to help you anticipate changes. But the trouble with always doing this is that it ignores the changes from the front chain rings. So the underrated technique number one is changing gears before you need to, but importantly, changing both the front and rear gears at the same time. And this is called a counter shift. That is, shifting up to a bigger chain ring should be accompanied by a comparable downshift on the cassette and vice versa. Usually at least two cogs, although this can change under certain conditions. So the idea of counter shifting is we want to go easy, hard. So if you're in the big ring, dropping it down to the smaller chain ring is easy, and then two at the back is hard. And then it's the other way around. You want to go up, that's easy. So you go to the back first. So you go up, up, and then the big chain ring. 
By doing it in this order, you maintain your momentum and you conserve energy. It may take some practice to get the timing right, but once you master this technique, you'll find that your rides become smoother and more efficient. All right, about to do the shift. And we just go. Click, click, click. Okay, front chain ring, click, click at the back. With practice, these motions can be executed smoothly and quickly to minimize the time spent shifting chain rings when you have to lighten up pressure on the pedals. And the second is changing gears before you go uphill to maintain momentum to make the transition smooth. But there's also corners, so changing before a U-turn or any corner where there might be a change of speed. The next underrated skill that's going to help you save energy is easier demonstrated on off-road terrain. But don't go running away because before you hear out the magic of transferring this to the road, which improves your ability to use the terrain to your advantage. There's one specific place where cheap momentum is embodied, the pump track. But it's when the lessons from the pump track are transferred to varying road elements that you start to feel the power of this knowledge. So this is harnessing the energy you are creating by move, moving over obstacles or through pedaling, and it's really valuable in conserving energy. The repetitive motion builds momentum and propels you along. It's basic physics. Momentum from riding a bike provides continuous power if you pedal at a constant, steady pace. Mountain biking uses inconsistent terrain to generate cheap momentum, whereas cheap momentum on the road is fed from the angle of the corner or the steepness of a hill. And let me show you an example. Letting go of the brakes on a corner is the best way to capitalize on a drop in the road. And you can see this here, complete with whoosh sound effects. Set up, off the brakes, let it run. Moving into the pack and riding with other cyclists, let's get to the third underrated skill and talk about momentum in a race or open group ride. We can break down riding into two moves. One, braking. So let's start with braking. And a warning, momentum is a double-edged sword. It can propel you to the right places or it can keep you locked in to bad choices. So choosing where you use momentum is also very important. Watch this. Other riders wash off speed just because the guy in front breaks, but you can slip straight through them, sometimes even landing at the front of the bunch. And I've pulled things like this in local crits, and at times I would get yelled at, and other times it would mean the difference between getting in the winning break or avoiding a crash. Number two is attacking, the art of attacking. So say you arrive at the front after pulling some of these moves. This is an opportunity to attack. Depending on the pace at the time and your race plan, attacking in a lull will maintain your momentum against the bunches. And you also see this in road races, in that moment when the bunch knows a breakaway will be caught. So they ease up just enough to cause a lull. And this is when you see attacks because there is really no point attacking when the pace is high because the momentum needed will not create the same effect. And the point is to break that elastic getting a big enough gap before settling into a steadier pace. So stating this simply, when you move from farther back in the pack, you should attack to get the jump on the other riders, especially if you are going into turns or starting a hill. The fourth and final technique is probably the most underrated of them all, and it's super simple and doesn't really look like anything that is going to drastically improve your momentum, but let me try and persuade you otherwise. So here you have two go-to strategies for bigger hills and faster group rides. The first technique is sag climbing. On a one-off hill, sprint forward 
in front of the group and then so once you're ahead you'll hit the base of the climb in the front and then this allows you to stay within your own limits during the climb so then you let the group pass but exerting just enough effort to avoid getting dropped. And the second technique is for hilly sections and is a bit more complicated to describe but essentially it's the same thing as the sag climbing of the first climb. It's just that when you crest and you're gassed then you gun it, you go further, you full gas all the way down. And you want to keep this momentum going all the way over the top. Down the gears when I need to. Between hills you prep your gears for the climb and you get it easier than harder technique. Then when you hit the incline you're going to eat up your momentum and that's when other riders have caught up and you maintain cadence, again dropping through the gears and back down through the pack until the next crest, then you rinse and repeat this process. And now here's a bonus, watch this with no commentary. Is it obvious what Wout van Aert is doing? Now let's watch with commentary. So you see the replay of the sprint and just that hesitation and uh, they always say just don't hesitate and uh, it's exactly what Wout did ever so slightly coming out of that corner just rolled for a little bit too long and just allowed Van der Poel to get the jump. As we saw with Wout van Aert, hesitation can kill your momentum. By committing to your moves and avoiding hesitation you can maintain your speed and conserve energy. Hesitation, often resulting from indecision, can be a significant determinant in cycling. It's crucial to seize opportunities swiftly and re react without overthinking, especially for sprinters. A moment's hesitation can lead to missed chances and lost races, even for the fastest finishers. The key takeaway is to commit every time. Train your mind to see the moment and avoid hesitation for optimal performance. Now adding these skills into your cycling is a surefire way to dramatically save energy for when it counts. But the technique you will use for things like cornering also plays a really big part in saving energy and going as fast as possible. So be sure to check out this video here to learn the most effective way to corner for the fastest speed gains.